What is up guys, Alan here from FPV Creator, and today we'll be talking about my final thought on this T-Motor PMP drone that only costs $190. This is the FT5 Mark II, let's get to it. So, for the past two weeks, I've been flying this drone almost everywhere in the desert. Yo, what is up guys, it's Ellen for FPV Creator, and today we will be we are in a high desert in California, and we'll be testing out this two drone, the T-Motor FT5 Mark II. I've been flying it in a nearby park, and honestly, I have some really great impression with this. Now, my first impression of this was, oh, it's just another ordinary classic you know five inch looking but however the more i fly the more details i see on the design of this drone that i realize that it's not an ordinary ordinary five inch so in this video i'll be talking about those little things that actually surprised me for the past two weeks i'll be talking about cons and i'll be talking about pros of this drone and my final verdict on whether you should get it or not so one of the thing that i really like about this quad right here is believe it or not the color now Almost all the printed parts on this quad, actually all of them, are bright orange, including the propellers. The motor is also bright orange with a, with a white stripe. Now, even though it's just the color, but one thing I found really useful is that if you crash, it, crash this into a bush, you can find it. Unlike my other quads, which are mainly just black and maybe a little bit of silver or like silverish blue, I crashed this quad actually into a bush once and it was almost 400 feet away and from from where I was standing I was actually able to f see this quad so if you crash this into somewhere like far it's actually really easy to find it. and that's the first thing I like about this quad. Now the second detail is about this little piece earlier during the open box where I have no idea what the function is. It is actually a camera extension or a adapters of some sort. Now, this quad, believe it or not, supports 19mm, 20mm, and 21mm. And that means that you can fit so many variety of FPV camera on this quad. So you have more options, unlike a lot of the other quads where you only get to you know mount a single type of them. And those of you who are using 19mm ones, like the Cadex Vista, you even get soft mounting due to like the 3D printed cushion inside. And I find this really impressive. Now, there is another thing I'd like to highlight is that the design of this battery top plate is actually smart. So as you can see, there are two cushions that goes to the middle and the back. Whenever I put something heavy like a GoPro Hero 9 in the front, I was actually able to shift the battery all the way to the back without it slipping, all thanks to this little battery anti-slip cushion on the back. And one thing that I really like about this quad is its XT60 placement. There is almost no way you can break that XT60 unless you flew under a truck and let the truck crush it. And what I find really useful is that now the wires are not going to get cut off whenever I crash and everything just seems super clean like there is no messy wires flying everywhere you also don't need to worry about the wire getting pulled off off the solder pad or this how solder pad getting pulled off whenever you crash because you can't you can't do it so that's something I really really love about this quad now before we continue off the video I just want to remind you if you like what we're doing right now please consider give us a like and also subscribe and comment some thought down below in the comment section, it will really help us grow. Anyways, let's continue. Now before I keep talking about how amazing this quad is, I'm gonna go through the cons. Number 1, mounting my Cadex Vista was a little bit hard. Now because there's a really large distance between the back of the quad and the front, my, quad, my Cadex Vista wire is really tensioned inside, so given any moment, if there's any little like tree branch that fly into this quad, it will break the Cadex Vista's wire. So I'm actually a little bit concerned about that. Number two, first time installation was pretty hard. Now, traditionally, you had to remove the top plate in order to mount your camera, your uh, video transmitter, and your receiver. But for this one, you had to take out all three top plate, including the two U brackets, which are meant to be easily removed. 
So by the end, I took out the front, the middle, the back, and the TU bracket in order to just to install my Catus Vista and my other components on. That took a very long time. And also, there is no really plug and play version because you had to solder all your wires on. So for my Vista and my TBS Crossfire Nano receiver, I had to solder all their wires on onto the flight controller. For people who are more experienced with soldering, this is probably something good for you. But for people that doesn't really know how to solder, you might break the flight controller in the process. So it, depending on who you are, this may be a con or it may be a pro. Number three. I have some trouble mounting the balance lead until I start using Nether Velcro to secure my balance lead because even though the XD60 is secured, the balance lead is still not. Now it's not really T-Motor's fault because everybody's quads like that these days. So um, make sure you install your balance lead because if it falls off to the side, those propellers are going to cut it. Number 4. Battery strap is incredibly hard to adjust. Just look at this. The battery strap is directly touching the top of the flight controller. Even though this is common practice, I have constant worry that if I try to move this battery strap, it's gonna it's gonna shave off some of the flight controller's component, like the low capacitor on there or low receiver. And also my wires already look a little bit damaged from all this like you know pulling back and forth from the battery strap. So I'm a little bit concerned about this, but again, it's not a major concern. And for most of us, this is already everyday practice. Number four, exposed wires. Do you realize that this cable that connects the ESC and the flight controller is tensioned? It's very close to the outside and it's extremely thin and fragile. Any, at any given moment when you crash, you might have a tree branch or a little rock that scrape through these wires just completely demolish it. And I'm very concerned about this honestly because this is one of the key wires that basically connects the the power system and the smart system of this tire drone together. So I don't know why they put it here instead of anywhere inside the frame because this is really fragile. I mean, it looks clean though, but I'm concerned because if I crash into like a rock on the side, that's a GG for that wire. Number six, the dust and debris can get in there so easily. For personally, because I fly in the desert a lot, there are tremendous of dust. And also a couple buddy of mine flying the mountains where there's a lot of snow. If this quad crash into any of one of them, there are tremendous dust and debris that could get into a flight controller and break it, especially the snow. So personally, I don't really like this, how T-Motor basically exposed every single sensitive component to outside. Now this might be okay for the people who are flying in not so dry or like, like normal conditions. But this is definitely not one of the best thing you want to have if you're living in a dusty or snowy place. Number seven, the prop directions. I was flying on a local hiking trail earlier and then the propeller got loose itself in the middle of the air. It is still loose right now. I, I haven't tightened it yet. This is because there is no direction on every of those motors. They all are designed for, I think, counterclockwise. But of course, two of them runs clockwise. So this two motor right here, Make sure you tighten your your propeller nuts before you fly, otherwise you're gonna run into trouble. And especially during when you crash, they are gonna get loose. So, now personally, I still prefer the ones that have motor direction. Even though when you break one, like let's say you break um, let's say you break two counterclockwise, but you only have two clockwise, it might be a problem. But still, I had problems during flights, and that's a problem. Alright, let's talk about the pros and the, all the good little things about this quad. Number one, the propellers and the motors, they're absolutely smooth. I mean, of course, they're made by T-Motors. But this VLOX 2306 motor is probably one of the smoothest and the best motor I have ever used. There are so much punch on the high throttle range. The middle range are so smooth that they're ultra controllable. Even if you just push up the throttle a little bit, it's very responsive. So I absolutely love those motors. Especially this entire quad only costs like 190 bucks. Like the PMP version only costs 190 bucks. This motor and the propeller are literally overkills. Number two, the flight controllers. I mean, F7 and a 50M4 in one ESC on a $190 PMP drone. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. It's really good. Number three, the way they mount this Immortal T 
where it's actually not a completely circular mount it's actually like a little cut off where you can basically just take your immortal tl and mount it and mount it back easily this really helps when with installation because there are so many people who made it there are so many manufacturers who made it a way that you have to basically bend your entire mortal t until you squeeze in this one's not and also i would like to highlight the range i can get on this quad this quad is one of my farthest going 5 inch freestyler excluding the long range because those are made for long range this is not made for long range this thing flies so damn far with this crossfire nano rx and i have a micro tx which is now i'm not really sure why but one of my guesses is because everything on this quad is so spaced out you can see how long the centerpiece is so i think that that really helped with the range so far this is my one of my most reliable quad in terms of flying far and number five the capacitor mount guess what no more capacitor flying in the middle of the frame when they actually did a little cutout for your capacitor and this capacitor is probably not gonna get damaged unless you land on a sharp rock directly on this this made the interior or the back the rear of this quad so clean i love it number six you can modify this quad so easily because there is no like awkward placements of screws on this quad, literally every screw are just like, I don't know, 23 and 25 apart. So I was able to print the scope mount on the day I receive it because it's just simple measurement. And also this type of traditional looking quad really allows you to expand your creativity. You can basically 3D print a mount whatever you want. And you can re replace their part if you don't like them, even though they're, they're pretty good. Why would you replace them? So yeah, this is one of the best things about traditional quad bands like this. Number seven, even if you're not like a complete freestyle, if you are into cinematic, this quad is still perfect for you because there is no problem with propellers in shot. Even on my GoPro 9 Black super wide, there is no propellers. Reason being, this middle piece is so damn long that you can mount a GoPro all the way to in the front and it's basically a cinematic frame. It's super useful for cinematic and super reliable too. And number eight, this quad come pre-tuned when you get it, so you don't need to tune yourself. The the default tune or the factory tune on this quad is absolutely smooth and buttery clean. I mean, T Motor made it. Not even surprised. Now, keep in mind that whenever you're buying a quad, you're actually buying a flying experience and a video you get afterward. So here, I'm presenting you the following video that I was able to film with this amazing quad right here. For my final thought on this quad, well, first of all, it's one of the most amazing quad you can get right now. It's made by T-Motor, it has T-Motor's quality in there. Just remember, it's only 190 freaking bucks. And you get like T-Motor V-Logs, you get two set of propellers, you get a flat F7 flight controller, and you get a 50 amp ESC, it runs on six cells. Yeah. I mean, for the price, I don't think there's anything else that can compete with it, especially it come from T-Motor, one of the best like drum maker or motor maker of the industry so my final verdict is that even though there are some minute details that i don't necessarily like personally because they might like affect the lifespan or the duration of use of this quad in conclusion this quad is absolutely amazing for its price it's very smooth it's one of my most reliable quad already and the thrust is absolutely amazing that I overshot my power loop on this every single damn time so I better go back to DRL simulator and start practicing. Anyways, so just remember you can purchase this quad at fpvcreator.com and if you purchase it there it will also help supporting us. And besides that, I would give this quad a really high rating. Peace.